Hi everyone, Jess here from the Scrappy Sisters. So for this layout, I am using the gorgeous Coco Vanilla Midnight Collection. So you can see there I've got the chipboard and the ephemera pack and I was just taking a look at that to see uh, what was included. And I'm just having a look through the pieces of paper that I've got. Um, such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful collection. For those of you that haven't seen it, check it out right now. It's gorgeous. Uh, and I fell in love with this piece of paper the minute I got to it. I'm like, that, I'm using that. For those of you that watch my channel, you'll know that I nearly always use a uh, white, 12 by 12 white paper as my um, background. I'm really trying to branch out lately. So you may have noticed now in 2019 that I'm trying to branch out and use a little bit more um, patterned background paper. So for my son's first album, for Tom's first album, I really started to use more patterned paper uh, because I, again, I want to try and use up some of my stash as well. And I want to uh, use all that paper that we have that I never use. And um, still in my family album, I found it a little bit difficult to break into using the patterned paper, but I'm getting there. So as you could see from the photos, uh, my son, my big son, Jack, he, I have a cup of tea with him every morning at breakfast time. And just lately he started saying that he wants a cup of tea. Well, in my opinion, he's far too young to have a cup of tea, but this particular day, I don't know what I do, got up to get something for him, maybe a glass of milk, and I turned back and the cheeky monkey had taken my mug. Now there was about... Well, maybe one mouthful right in the bottom of the mug, but I'm not even sure he drank any or tasted it. I think it was just the joy of being so cheeky and stealing mummy's mug and then not actually getting into trouble. Mummy just laughing at him and saying, go on then, have a try, have a taste. He either did taste it and didn't like it because he's never asked for it again or the novelty wore off because I let him, so he didn't ask for it again. Who knows? <laughs> But yes, I'm going to make a little paper pieced mug here. I had grand ideas that I was going to use bits and pieces of lots of different colors, or I was going to cut this patterned paper and still stick to my plain white background. But I found it really difficult to cut into these papers. They were gorgeous. So I decided this piece was my next best choice because um, it was so sort of, in a good way, splotchy and, and mottled that it kind of looked like different colours on the pattern paper. So I thought I'll just use that one. So I still wanted to go with the idea of paper piecing. So I still have the handle, the mug, and then the top, sort of the reflection shallow part of the mug. I didn't technically, now that I'm using all the same piece of paper, I didn't technically need to cut it into those three sections, but in my brain, that's how I needed it to work. So that's what I'm just going to roll with. So once I cut those out, I then just trace them onto the back of um, this paper. I, I, You may have noticed I just folded the mug part of my teacup in half. That was because I was trying to even it out a little bit. It was a little bit winky wonky um, because it's hand drawn. And I just wanted to try and even it out. Some of you who know that I have a silhouette cameo might say, why, Jessica, why is it hand-drawn? Why didn't you just cut it out on your cameo? Wouldn't that have been easier? Well, yes, dear listeners. Yes, that would have been easier. But I have an original cameo. So what are they now? Seven years old? It's in a little bit of struggle street. It works perfectly for a while like when I say a while, like a month, and then it just dies a slow death. And I think it's just at the stage now where it's just a bit clunky. Um, it seems to be fine if I replace the blade and the mat, but replacing the blade and the mat every sort of month or so seems a bit crazy. So I've kind of put it on hold at the moment. I know my sister thinks she not things. My sister would like a cameo for her birthday. So then I'm wondering if I need one, we could just share. When I say we could share, it would be hers and I'd just make her cut things for me. Um, I'm just not sure. I'm just in a bit of limbo at the moment. It's, it's much more convenient to have your own because you can just do things whenever you want them. But they're not cheap. So, yeah. I... 
let's be honest, I will probably buy another mat and another blade and see if that works. And if it die, sadly dies again, then I will probably look into what else I can do to keep either keep it alive or to replace it or what next, basically. So back to what I'm doing. So I've cut out the three little pieces of my cup of tea in the same color. And then I'm looking at it all placed together and realized it really doesn't look the way I wanted it to. That's why I wanted to paper piece it in the first place and use the three different colors, but I was being a hoarder and wouldn't cut into the gorgeous paper. So what else can I do? So I'm thinking, 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 and moving on to my photos for a little while. Um, I want to cut the borders off those because I want to separate them. So just in case you're wondering, I print my photos at Officeworks. It's about 10 cents a photo. Uh, I get the borders included because in my project life section of the album, I like to um, stick all of my photos down onto either pocket page cards or a cut down pattern paper because I just think it looks pretty. And if I get the borders on, when I cut it down, I don't lose any of the photo. I just am losing the border and that gives it room to stick onto a pocket page card or a three by four card or a four by six card. Um, and you'll actually still be able to see a bit of that color and pattern around the side. That does two things. Uh, in my 2019 or 18 album, my family album, I use a kit. And so in my pocket page and in my 12 by 12, for that week I use the kit so it's cohesive in my son's first year album I use a um, Becky Higgins core kit and it's just a really great way to use up my stash of that because otherwise my core kits just sit in the cupboard and never get used I actually wouldn't buy a core kit again um, I didn't buy this one for this purpose I bought it thinking oh wow amazing a core kit like I think we all did when they came out and then went oh, this is a lot of cards. What am I going to do with this? And so I just found that this was a really good way to use it. So you can see here that my idea is to make a cup full of flowers. So I just need to do something to my actual cup. So I'm just um, getting out my threads. My um, They are the DMC, I think it's called, floss. Uh, and I am going to put some chain stitching around the edge. So first of all, I uh, glue that just with normal glue, nothing special, just school glue, glue it onto a bit of scrap paper just to hold it all in place. And then once that's glued down, then I am going to pierce the holes using a quite a thick needle and a piece of foam to pierce all the holes in all the way around all the different spots that I want to, to stitch, chain stitch, so that um, the holes are pre-done. I find it much, much, much easier to stitch on paper if you have the holes pre-done. Uh, if I'm trying to pierce the holes as I go, I end up bending the paper or spacing them too far apart or too closely together and it just doesn't look as nice. So I'm pretty particular with how I piece my holes. I like to try and have it even all the way around the edging, like as in even spacing. So I have been known, and I will, I'm about to, get a ruler to help measure them about a centimetre apart. I just think it looks a lot nicer when they're universally spaced. So I don't do that the whole way. I just sort of get started. And once I kind of get into the rhythm of how wide a centimeter is, it's much easier just to keep doing that by eye, especially around the really curvy parts of the handle and things. But um, I just found that it was a nice quick way to get the ball rolling and then keep going. So I'm going to stop filming. Uh, I'm going to show you a tiny bit of the chain stitching and then I'm going to stop filming and come back with it all complete because um, that's a little bit uh, repetitive and a little bit takes a little bit of time to do that. So I just 
Google chain stitching to remind myself how to do it. It's super simple, but I'd just forgotten how. Uh, it does use a lot more thread than, or floss than uh, embroidery thread than a lot of the other stitching, like simple back stitching. Um, you can pull it super tight, you can leave it loose. It's sort of up to you how you want it to look. Um, I left mine relatively loose. Uh, because it was the first time in ages that I'd done it. So you go from the back in and out of the same hole. So you go from the back out and then you go back in the exact same hole. And then when you come and you leave it like a little loop. And then when you come through the next hole, you make sure you go through that loop. So definitely look it up to double check, but it's super simple once you get going. Now I used all of the thread that I had left on that spool and I didn't have enough to complete my whole mug as you can see so it's not my my stitching's not perfect um, as I said I haven't done it in quite a while but I think it's really effective I certainly didn't need to separate <laughs> the mug into those three sections if I was just going to stitch it like this but I didn't really know where I was headed so that's okay didn't hurt anyone that's been done um, so now I'm going to have to place at least one of my photos over the handle to cover up that bit, which is fine. And now I'm thinking about how I'm going to put all these flowers. It's pretty much every, no, not pretty much. It is every single flower and leaf that comes in uh, the ephemera and the chipboard pack. So I'm happy. This is what I want. I decide stop fiddling around. It'll take you three times as long just to do the layout. Start gluing things down. So I'm gluing on the mug with just double-sided tape and then I'm going to attach the photos with foam dots so that they're stuck up higher than the other. Uh, they've just been backed with a bit of white paper um, and one of the pattern papers from the collection but I can't remember which one. And... That my those foam dots there they're just from spotlight in case you're wondering um and in a minute i'm going to skip to having all this stuck down all the photos in place and stuck down and then moving on to doing my flowers and magic so they're all stuck on and then i've just gotten out my uh versamark pen which is like an embossing glue pen some black embossing powder from stamping up which is brand new still in its packet and then that's just an anti-static bag also from stamping up um, they were part of my birthday present last year and i haven't used them yet so just give, getting those all out to give those a go now um, so basically the way the pen works, in case you're wondering, it's like there's two ends to it. One end is like a ballpoint pen. The other end is like a um, brush, a paintbrush, and you just draw where you want the embossing to go. Don't leave it too long because it does dry. Um, and you'll see that when I do this, that, that some of it sticks a bit better than others. You can certainly do another layer, but for the look I was going for, the amount that was done was fine. Most of it was going to get covered anyway. So I'm just approximately planting all of my flowers. Planting. Well, I guess I am planting them in my cup of tea. And now I'm going to start having a look at where the stems need to be. Um, and so I'm just painting that on. So you can see there the kind of glue that comes out. Um, but as I said before, don't leave it too long because it dries. And yes, part of this does start to dry. It is a very hot day in Australia um, at this time. And my lights are also a hot light. So you do, I do need to be a little bit careful. So now I'm sprinkling my black embossing powder all over that glue um, and then I've got an odd sheet of paper that I'm going to um, tap the leftover onto and then I'm going to use that piece of paper to carefully pop the leftovers into the tub 
that's why there's a fold in it so you can see already the sections where it didn't quite stick so I'm popping the embossing powder back over it again um, sort of worked a little bit but really I needed to put some more glue I needed to um, heat heat it and then put more glue over the top again a second time to be honest I couldn't be bothered and as I said earlier the look I was going for it was fine not to be too strong or too dark so now just heat gunning that trying not to put it too close to my photos I don't want to warp my photos um, so obviously I have to apply the heat but I don't want to put any heat directly onto my photographs which I don't it's all fine there's no drama there um, once that starts to take it's really quite quick and you can see it start to turn shiny which is cool and as I said there some of them are really nice and dark but other ones I really probably should have put some more glue on and gone again but I didn't want to so there's that done and they're going to be the stems there in coming out of the cup and now I'm going to put the flowers back on I'll end up covering most of the stems but um yeah you'll see some of them you'll see a few um just to sort of give the idea that the flowers aren't coming out of nowhere they could have been coming out of nowhere it wouldn't have really caused any drama I just chose to put stems on because a I wanted to have a play with my new embossing powders and Versamax pen but b I um just liked the idea of having some stems and tying those glasses in to get those flowers in together so I'm not going to show you the gluing down process of these flowers I'm just going to show you the the laying out process if that makes sense because it looks the same um, I didn't think you needed to watch me glue them down after you watch me lay them out I'm just sort of spreading them across that um, that section of the where it's coming out of the cup and a little bit down underneath and beside the cup as I said earlier, this is literally every flower that came in the chipboard and um, ephemera pack. Just checking that I'm happy with the way it looks and then I'm going to move on with the next section. Oh, I don't stick them all completely flat. I do stick some of them up with foam as well. Again, just to add some dimension because there is chipboard in there also. Um, and then I'm going to move on so to I'm my title. I'm going to put on my title. So I just got these super gorgeous stickers from my stash. They're called Amber. And as you can see, they're sort of light pink, dark pink, and a kind of bluey purple color. And they've got this gorgeous flower etched into them in gold. And they're a chipboard thicker. And they were really cute. So I was thinking, 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 trying to come up with a super witty, super original title something really cool yeah I couldn't so <laughs> I came up with a cup of tea so I did that with the big font and then wanted wanted to cuten it up a little bit so I then got the little mini happy life thickers uh, the pink paisley happy life thickers and wrote your my and I used the gold color for that because that ties in with the gold that's been etched into the flowers. So you're my cup of tea, um, which is really cute, but not original. Um, and then I'm almost done. So then I'm going to get some gold Heidi shine. So now that I've introduced a little bit of gold with those thickers, I want to add a little bit more with the, some splatters. And this is the layout done. So I hope you have enjoyed watching this process. Uh, I hope it inspires you to do something exciting on one of your layouts as well. Thanks everyone and I'll see you next time.